The article is called Poison is Treatment, the Campaign to Fluoridate America. I'm at the Global Research website. They have a lot of interesting articles here. I see the word poverty. I see media. I see justice. I see 9-11. I see war crimes. And so I'm going to give you the link to this website along with the links to some videos you should watch if you want to become informed about the undeclared war against the people. I want you to note that they are not putting vitamins into our water supply. And that means that they don't give a shit about your health. The dumping toxic chemicals into your water supply is more about the industry toilet than it is about anything to do with your health. They use a lie that these chemicals that come in a group, arsenic, lead, cadmium, mercury, and hydrofluorosilicic acid, they are the result of what's called wet scrubbing at the fertilizer plant, phosphate fertilizer. They spray a mist, bring down all the toxins so they don't go into the atmosphere and kill cows. Instead, they hose down the chimneys and they put that water into a tank. It contains five deadly chemicals. Arsenic is the major one. It also contains fluoride, lead, cadmium, and mercury. This should never be put into anybody's drinking water, no matter how dilute, because the safe level of arsenic is zero. It's not 0.1 or 0.2 or 0.7 or 1.5 milligrams per liter. It is zero. And they go way beyond that. As many as 56 parts per million. 4.9 to 56 parts per million is what I have read. And I read them for a video. You can watch the video. I have a playlist for this topic, fluoridation of the water water fluoridation. So before I read the article, I want to point out that there are no vitamins in our water supply. There's no vitamin going down the toilet when you flush. There's no vitamin in your shower, but there is fluoride, arsenic, lead, cadmium, and mercury. And we are violating the law, we citizens, who are forced to drink this shit this deadly cocktail of arsenic, lead, cadmium, mercury, and fluorosilicic acid. When it gets wet, it's hydrofluorosilicic acid. And this acid leaches the lead off the pipe, so you get another dose of lead if you have old pipes. This is unfair to people with old pipes on the East Coast. Your buildings are hundreds of years old, and our buildings in the West are just about all new. So you guys are being poisoned to death. These chemicals cause cancer and many other ailments. They make your kids stupid. So your kid might just barely miss the opportunity to go to college and live out his life or her life on slave wages. This is unfair. This is part of the undeclared war against the people. They ran a 60-year campaign of propaganda telling the people lies that it was good for your teeth. They didn't run any tests to prove that it's good for your teeth. And recent studies show there is no effect that the tooth decay rates in unfluoridated areas are lower than in fluoridated areas. So there is no significant effect. The differences between non-fluoridated and fluoridated areas is only a difference of the margin of error. And so statistically, there is no effect. If you thought that fluoride was good for your teeth, it's because they told you that lie. Drinking fluoride does nothing for your teeth any more than drinking a bottle of shoe polish does any good for your shoes. You ask a lady who paints her fingernails if she would drink the fingernail polish in order to have shiny nails, she would say, are you crazy? And that's the point. You would have to be crazy to drink fingernail polish to have good nails. But that's what they're telling us about fluoride. It's an outrageous criminal lie. I'm talking war criminal lie. There are laws that say very clearly you cannot dump toxic metals and fluoride into the water supply. 
yet they've been getting away with it for 60 years. Isn't it time to end it in your community? If you think that rat poison is good for you, why don't you sit down with a box of it, get something that's labeled sodium fluoride, and just eat the whole box? You wouldn't dare do that because it would kill you. Well, we're being killed anyway. There are more people who have died over the past 60 years than all the world wars combined. Every war everywhere on the planet, more dead from fluoride poisoning. That's what I've read. The damage that is done to teeth is not limited to teeth. The fluorosis that dentists see every day is a window into the body. If the teeth are damaged, the bones are damaged. The tissues are damaged, the kidneys are damaged, the heart, liver, the pituitary gland, the pineal gland, the brain, they're all damaged by fluoride. Why is fluoride so toxic? Because it's electronegative. It's the most electronegative element on the periodic table. It's like a neodymium magnet. If all your body processes were paper clips on the table and you dragged a neodymium magnet through there, the neodymium magnet would pick up every paper clip. And that's what fluoride does. It disrupts all body processes. Your body is fighting off disease. Your body is fighting off cancer. And that keeps you healthy. When fluoride enters the picture, you are no longer healthy. You are overwhelmed. Fluoride destroys enzymes that help you stay alive. Over the past 60 years, people have died of diseases that were fluoride related. But the death certificate didn't say so because there was a lot of pressure on coroners not to put down the true cause of death, fluoride. Harvard did the studies to show that the higher the fluoride is in the blood, the lower the IQ score. And there's something that you should know about IQ scores, which I didn't know, and I, I thought it was fascinating to hear Dr. Paul Conant, head of FAN, Fluoride Action Network. He says, if a teacher was teaching a classroom and everyone's IQ dropped five points, the teacher could not tell. Five percentage points is not discernible. And then he shows the bell curve. He says, this is before fluoride. The average IQ is 100. Now we've got a little tip under the graph on the right and a little tip under the graph on the left. And the right represents the geniuses. And over on the left, we have the lowest IQ people in the population. Now shift that bell curve five points to the left. You double the number of mentally retarded, and you just about wipe out all the geniuses. Now, is that going to make America competitive? It is an issue of national security to end fluoridation of the water. And here's why. Suppose that Americans and Chinese and Indians all had the same basic IQ, and there is no fluoridation anywhere, and therefore no lowering of the IQ. Let's look at China. Population 1.3 to 1.5 billion people, okay? How many people do they have in their top 25%? Somewhere in the neighborhood of 375 million, that's their smartest 25%. We don't even have 375 million in our population. Google is reporting that our population dropped from 323 million to 318.9 million. I'd like to know where those 5 million people went. 5 million people just vanished. Did they go to the concentration camps? The FEMA camps with the barbed wire on the inside and the airtight buildings always located near a railway? Or did they get gassed and their bodies were shipped off to the underground facility at Denver where they have a crematory? Who controls the media? They do. Who controls the FEMA camps? They do. Who controls the highways? They do. Who controls the railways? They do. Who controls the morgues and the doctors? They do. So you're never going to hear anything about this. 
But Google is now reporting 318.9 million people in this country, and it used to be 323 million. While you're thinking about that, let's continue with our poisoning of America. They call it a medical treatment because they're treating teeth. They never bothered to run any tests to see if it was effective. So the efficacy is in question. It is unethical in science to go into implementation without running the tests. You have to test and prove that your treatment is safe. This treatment of poisoning the water with arsenic, lead, cadmium, mercury, and fluoride is not safe. If this is a medicine, it is certainly not a pharmaceutical grade medicine. Let me repeat what I said earlier. They spray a water mist to bring down arsenic, lead, cadmium, mercury, and hydrofluorosilicic acid at the fertilizer plant. They're putting five poisons into a truck without any preparation or cleaning of that material at all. They're calling it a medicine, and they're driving the toxic material that they were forced to bring down in a wet scrubbing process. And they truck that right over to your water company where they get paid millions of dollars to dump it into your water supply. Our water supply is industry's toilet. Doctors prescribe medicine after knowing the patient. And there is no doctor involved here and there is no knowledge of the patient. If it's supposed to help your teeth, what about the people who don't have teeth like infants and old people with dentures? Why should they be forced to drink arsenic, lead, cadmium, mercury, and hydrofluorosilicic acid? Fluoride, by the way, is more toxic than lead. It's more toxic than lead. Lead is very toxic, 4.0. Fluoride is even more toxic than very toxic. It is 4.3. And arsenic is extremely toxic at 5.0. Fluoride resides between lead and arsenic. Now, how much lead, arsenic, and fluoride do you want on your breakfast cereal? I say none. And if there are any proponents listening to my voice, I would like you to go to the grocery store and get some sodium fluoride. You'll find it in the radicide section. Raticide, meaning it kills rats. It's rat poison. I want you to go over to the store and buy some. And when you're having your cereal, why don't you put a tablespoon on your cereal? You'll be dead by morning. Fluoride is more toxic than lead. Fluoride is located between lead and arsenic. Lead is very toxic. Arsenic is extremely toxic. Now, which one do you want on your children's breakfast cereal? Lead, fluoride, or arsenic? I say none. And yet, for 60 years, we've had to put up with fluoridation of our water supply. In violation of the laws that say you cannot dump this stuff into the water supply. When you flush the toilet, when you take a shower, it goes to the sewer treatment plant. And they don't take the fluoride out of the water. They clean the water with bacteria that are killed by fluoride. And then they pass that sewage on to lakes, rivers, streams, and eventually they all go to the ocean. If they don't go to the ocean, that's good news. They go into the groundwater. That's just what we want, fluoride in the groundwater, isn't it? Isn't that what we really want? I say no. What we want is a sudden end to the fluoridation of the water supply. It's wrong. The trucks that are bringing it in have fluoride in the form of hydrofluorosilicic acid. They have arsenic, lead, cadmium, and mercury on that truck. And what does the county or city or the water company do? They don't report how much arsenic they're feeding you. This is criminal. This is an undeclared war. It's chemical warfare. It's biological warfare. These are war crimes. The people who are doing this to us are war criminals. Infants are being overdosed. 
because their body weight is very low, yet they're consuming a lot of water for their body weight, and they don't even have teeth. Now, how cruel is that? What should you do if not make a phone call every day to somebody to help us out? Call the city councilors and the mayor. Leave a message. Send an email. Write a letter if you have to. Go see them if you have to. Tell them we don't want these poisons in our water. We have been lied to, and so we thought it was good for our teeth. Now the studies are showing it's not good for our teeth after all. It's no more good for our teeth than drinking a bottle of shoe polish would be good for our shoes. Or drinking fingernail polish being good for our nails. It's poison. Fingernail polish is poison. Fluoride is far more deadly poison. And we don't need any of it in our water. When you mix it up with arsenic, lead, cadmium, and mercury, it's even more deadly. So why are they putting it into our water? This has nothing to do with health. It has everything to do with dumping toxic chemicals. It has everything to do with turning our water supply into their sewer, their toilet. When doctors prescribe a medication, they want to control the dose. There is no control of the dose here. If you're a construction worker working out in the hot sun in Arizona, when the temperatures are 125 degrees, you drink a lot of water to keep cool. Is it fair that one person get that much fluoride? How much of the fluoride you drink stays with you? The answer, 50%. What does it stick to? It sticks to all of your internal organs. It sticks to bones and teeth because fluoride loves calcium. If your IQ is lowered, if your children's IQs are lowered, these people, these war criminals don't care. If laws are broken in the flushing of your toilet because you are dumping toxic chemicals into the water supply that goes to the sewer treatment plant and then it goes to the lakes and rivers and streams and ponds and oceans, you are guilty of a crime. You're not allowed to dump toxic chemicals into the water supply. If this goes into the groundwater, it's going to stay with us for many, many decades. It's better to end this today than to continue it for another 60 years. The water is for everyone. Fluoride is not. Not everyone has teeth. Not everyone needs the doses that they are being given. If people are diabetic, they drink a lot of water. Is it fair to poison them to death? This is a 60-year-old experiment which has failed. It was never an ethical experiment. The drugs you are given are not pharmaceutical grade. And for that reason, you must insist that they end this deadly practice. If you think this is capitalism, it is not. It is fascism. The people are sacrificed in order to benefit the corporations. That's fascism. If this was capitalism, you would see free markets. We don't have any free markets. You would see private property. We don't have any private property. You never own your car. You never own your house. You always have to pay somebody a tax. That means you're renting it. I don't think the role of government is to run a propaganda campaign for 60 years. Recent studies show that fluoride never had any effect on the teeth. You read anything put out by government, it is 100% bullshit lies. All right, now I will read the article. It's written by James F. Tracy. There are two dates here, 11 months apart. May 17, 2013 is the most recent date. But there's another one, the 23rd of June, 2012, and I have no idea why. The title of the article is Poisonous Treatment, the Campaign to Fluoridate America. The wide-scale U.S. acceptance of fluoride-related compounds in drinking water and a wide variety of consumer products over the past half century is a textbook case of social engineering orchestrated by Sigmund Freud's nephew and the father of public relations, Edward L. Bernays. That's a very strong sentence to start out with. The episode is instructive. 
for it suggests the tremendous capacity of powerful interests to reshape the social environment, thereby prompting individuals to unwarily think and act in ways that are often harmful to themselves and their loved ones. So far, James, you are kicking ass. Your first few sentences here, actually there are only two, the first two sentences are just amazingly powerful. It's like a boxer who gets into the ring and his first two punches are knockouts. So the government is twisting your mind, telling you lies, and what are you doing? You're doing something harmful to yourself and your loved ones. That's pretty powerful on the side of the fascists. The example is especially pertinent today as Western governments withhold data and utilize propaganda techniques to suppress knowledge of new technologies and life-threatening disasters such as the still-unfolding nuclear breakdown in Fukushima. Today, the battle over water fluoridation remains obscured in caricature and falsification often perpetrated by the mainstream media press itself. The potential for popular myth to eclipse historical fact is greatly accelerated when the political and informational pillars of civilization actively support such distortions. For example, a recent New York Times editorial points to, quote, that Cold War paranoia about fluoridation in drinking water, unquote. Well, there should be paranoia if you're being poisoned. And the people who work at the New York Times are also being poisoned. Aren't you glad? I hope they all die of cancer. The sickest thing of all is when a government agency proclaims some sort of victory in poisoning the people. And the author says, citing the Center for Disease Control's claim that fluoridation is one of the top accomplishments in public health over the past century, the Times evokes fluoride's difficult struggle with purportedly uninformed segments of the public. Quote, Critics no longer contend that fluoride is a communist plot. Instead, they express concerns about the costs involved, improper government control over a personal decision, and potential health dangers, unquote, footnote one. The refrain is familiar throughout a corporate-controlled media that unquestioningly amplifies the pronouncements of government agencies concerning fluoride's alleged safety and value for dental health. There is no value, and it was never safe to hose down a chimney and put fluoride, arsenic, lead, cadmium, and mercury in a truck and deliver it to your water company so that you can drink it. That was never safe. It never had anything to do with your health. It never had anything to do with good teeth because they didn't test it to see if it was effective. The efficacy has never been proven. And today they're doing tests and they're finding there is no connection between a drop in tooth decay, which started in the 1930s, long before fluoridation ever began, and fluoridation didn't really get up and running until the mid-60s when we were making nuclear bombs like crazy and we had to get rid of the fluoride somehow. There was no safe place on this planet to put it, so they put it into your drinking water. How do you like that? The author says, having been seemingly vetted and upheld by the newspaper of record and its counterparts, such sweeping declarations are seldom interrogated further by readers, much less the broader public. If every newspaper that put out propaganda was sued for lying to the people, we could put them all out of business, and I would start with the New York Times. It needs to be put out of business. Each person who published something as an editor or a writer should be personally liable for the damage that was done. 
and that will make all newspapers in the future much more careful about what they print. They want to see the tests. There should be a protocol. Before you put anything in print, you make sure that it's not poisoning the people. The author says, in fact, sodium fluoride is a dangerous poison and has been a primary active ingredient in a wide variety of insecticides and fungicides. I didn't know that it kills fungus also. The substance bioaccumulates in mammals. That's why they feed it to cows. They put it in the cow feed, and then they grind up the bones of cows and feed them to other cows. The substance bioaccumulates in mammals. You have McDonald's selling you chicken McNuggets. What's in them? The bones of chickens. That's why when you test for fluoride, it goes off the scale. Your chicken McNuggets are loaded with fluoride, and they're making your children stupid. Never order anything from McDonald's, period. The beef that you get are all the parts that nobody wants. What do you think happens to the ears, the nose, the eyes, the penis, the intestines? They grind all that stuff up and they sell it to you as hamburger and sausage. It's pure garbage. Do you recall biting into a McDonald's hamburger or a Burger King and tasting gristle? And you wonder, what is this? Those are the lips. They have no nutritional value. You're eating every part of the animal because they don't waste anything. Somebody will buy it. You put seasonings in it, put it inside of sausages, and people will buy it and eat it, and they will think that they are in sausage heaven. If they knew the truth about what they were eating, they would not eat it. They wouldn't even serve it to their dog, who gets whatever you don't want. The dog would die for you, and what does he get? He gets scraps. Fluoride accumulates in mammals. We only excrete 50% of what we consume. Fluoride should never be drunk. Neither should the others, arsenic, lead, cadmium, and mercury. And to have a government pushing this down your throat is criminal. It's a war crime. It's in violation of Geneva Conventions. We need a federal government like we need arsenic in our water. Cadmium, lead, and mercury. Fluoride accumulates in mammals and has been linked to dulled intellect in children. Fluoride is the cause of increased bone fractures and osteosarcoma, that is a disease of young men. Further, recent studies indicate that fluoride's role in preventing cavities through ingestion or, topically, is close to non-existent. What I read was, when they put fluoride on your teeth, it is a very, very thin film, like a couple of microns thick or something like that. They said it would take 10,000 layers of this to equal the width of a human hair. So it's a very, very thin layer, and it comes off when you're chewing. And where do you think it goes if it comes off when you chew it? It goes right into your system where it poisons your entire body. And 50% of the fluoride that goes into your mouth and down your esophagus never comes out. 50% is retained. So he has just given five reasons to put an end to fluoridation of the water. The next heading is Metal Industries Pollution Liability. Historical evidence indicates how the many concerns over water fluoridation were wholly warranted. Indeed, fluoridating the nation's water supply one locality at a time appears to have been a carefully coordinated plan. In other words, a conspiracy that sought to shield major aluminum and steel producers from countless liabilities caused by the substantial fluorine pollution their plants generated. 
So the solution to liabilities and claims was to just dump it into our water supply. The solution to pollution is dilution. This pollution increased alongside stepped-up military aircraft and armaments manufacture during World War II. The steel factories in California and Utah and aluminum producing plants in Washington and Oregon generated fluorine-saturated air that inevitably poisoned livestock, crops, and farming families. Good report, Tracy. James Tracy. In the post-war era, $30 million in damage suits were filed in Provo, Utah alone, with metal manufacturers paying $4.5 million to settle out of court. Thus, American industrial interests were the chief forces behind water fluoridation, not because of greed or altruism, but rather through fear of continued and potentially increased pollution liability as the Second World War drew to a close and the Cold War began. This was the conclusion of Dr. F. B. Exner, a steadfast public health advocate and opponent of water fluoridation, who observed that at the turn of the century, there's a quote now, the very existence of the smelter industry both in Germany and Great Britain was threatened by successful suits for fluorine damage. They're calling it fluorine here, which means it's not an ion. It did not attract an electron and become negatively charged. So this is fluorine. But it has such an, a strong attraction to electrons that it's rarely in the fluorine form. But they're calling it fluorine because that's the name of the element. They're not calling it fluorine because that's the way it's found. It's found typically as an ion. It is the most electronegative element on the periodic table. That's what makes it poisonous. So all along, I thought that the corporations were greedy. And it certainly wasn't altruism that made them dump their poisons into our drinking water. But rather, through fear of continued and potentially increased pollution liability as the Second World War drew to a close and the Cold War began. This was the conclusion of Dr. F. B. Exner, a steadfast public health advocate and opponent of water fluoridation who observed that at the turn of the century, quote, the very existence of the smelter industry both in Germany and Great Britain was threatened by successful suits for fluorine damage and by burdensome laws and regulations. Yes, laws and regulations that control business are burdensome, aren't they? They force you to dispose of your toxins in a sensible and reasonable manner. That's a burden. Today, the same threat hangs over the bulk of American big industry. And I want to point out that most of that big industry is owned by the same people who own 25% of the stocks on the stock market. I'm talking about the Federal Reserve and the big banks. They are part of the conglomerate here of large corporations, big banks, Federal Reserve, IRS Mafia, and Goldman Sachs. They have far, far, far too much power and control over everything, and they are taking lavish incomes and living lavish lifestyles at our expense. While the average American is working three jobs just trying to keep his head above water. Today, the same threat hangs over the bulk of American big industry, and fluoridation offers both camouflage and scapegoat. Hence, the relentless and uncompromising drive for universal fluoridation. End of quote. Footnote 6. In a discerning 1955 essay, Exner points to the unusual absence of research on fluorine in U.S. medical literature beginning in the late 30s, 1930s. Whereas, quote, the foreign medical literature has contained hundreds of articles on a wide variety of troubles that can be caused by fluorine. The same was true of the veterinary literature in this country, unquote. If industry wants to dump their poisons into our water so that they don't have to dispose of them, where do these poisons go? 
You flush them down the toilet, you take a shower and they go down the drain. And where do they wind up? They either wind up in the ground if someone has a septic system or they wind up at the water treatment facility. That's treatment of sewage. They let little bacteria eat the sludge and then when the water is clean, they release it to ponds, lakes, streams, rivers, and eventually it goes all to the ocean. Now, do we want our lakes, streams, rivers, creeks, ponds, do we want them full of fluoride or is this a toxic nightmare? Who is responsible? The person who flushed the toilet, took a shower, watered the lawn, or the person that forced them to accept fluoride in the water supply? This is a toxic nightmare. And who is responsible? It's an unknown guy who mandated that we all drink the industry's poisons. It's the guy who demanded that we drink from the toilets of industry. And so if they get off the hook and we get on the hook and we have to drink their shit, the author says, hence the relentless and uncompromising drive for universal fluoridation. Footnote six. He's saying that this is why they had to fluoridate one community at a time until they had them all. And today they have about 70%. If your water is fluoridated, you are drinking the toilet water from industry. How do you like that? How does that make you feel? How does it make you feel that your family is drinking from a toilet, the toilet of industry? And it's not just feces. It's arsenic, lead, cadmium, mercury, and hydrofluorosilicic acid. When a child goes up to the water and drinks, even if it's a stranger, I feel for that kid. He's drinking arsenic, lead, cadmium, mercury, and hydrofluorosilicic acid. I think this is wrong. I think industry should be more responsible. I think the media should be on the side of the people and so should the government. If this is the best that government can do, we don't need the government. We need secession. We need to part ways with the government. First, the federal government and then the state government because in California, the state mandates that everybody fluoridate their water. And if that's what state governments do, then we don't need state governments. We need local government. And we don't need to pay duplicate tax. We pay county tax. We don't need to pay state tax. Because every county is in the state. If we pay a county tax, that's enough. We don't need to pay a federal tax, especially a federal income tax, to an IRS mafia. And nobody knows where the money goes, but it doesn't go for roads and bridges like you dreamed as you were dreaming that fluoride, arsenic, lead, cadmium, and mercury were good for your teeth. No, they aren't. And the IRS has never spent a dime on infrastructure here. Never. The money goes to Europe, all of it. It's hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars every year. I read one figure, $2.3 trillion a year goes to the IRS. And all of that money goes to Europe. 40% of it is dropped off at the Crown in London, and 60% goes off to the Jesuits at the Vatican, who use it to cause wars. And then we have to pay $2 trillion more for each war. And what are the wars for? To occupy countries to steal the oil and to plant poppy seeds so they can have a nice heroin market and the CIA is running a nice heroin business and cocaine in your neighborhood. And if this is what government does, we don't need a government. What we need is to be free from the CIA and their drug dealing and the US UCSB and their money laundering for the CIA. Yes, the truth is out. We know about it. We know that the big banks launder money, and we know the CIA deals in drugs, and that's not all they deal in. They also kidnap children and use them in child sex rings to service the well-to-do. Continuing now, Exner further points to the apparent strategy behind fluoridation, one that may be occurring along similar lines in the Japanese government's efforts to distribute and incinerate radioactive waste from the March 2011 nuclear disaster throughout the archipelago. Footnote 7. Quote, there has been constant danger, unquote, Dr. Exner observed, 
quote, that somebody would analyze tissues in both high and low fluoride areas and find that fluoride poisoning is common in those residing in high areas. But if every community can be fluoridated, then there will be no fluorine-free areas for comparison. Footnote 8. In other words, spoil the environment by putting fluoride into the groundwater along with arsenic, lead, cadmium, and mercury, and then everything is okay? If government thinks like this, this is insanity. Now we're going to talk about propaganda. Say it with me. Propaganda. What is propaganda? It's when the rulers lie to you in order to motivate you. What do they want you to do? They want you to do something that's harmful to yourself. This is not something you would do normally. And so they have to lie to you in order to convince you that poison is actually good for you. They don't tell you the truth that they sprayed water on the chimneys and brought down fluoride, arsenic, lead, cadmium, and mercury. They don't want you to know the process by which they're bringing you toilet water. The chemicals are way too toxic to release into the atmosphere, and they will poison the wildlife in the area, creating a death zone, depending on which way the wind is blowing. And so they bring down these toxins with a process called wet scrubbing. What is that? They spray a mist of water to collect the toxins. And without any preparation whatsoever, they put it on trucks and they send it over to your water company where they get paid to deliver these poisons to your drinking water, turning your water supply into their toilet. Now, does that make you happy? Because the proponents of fluoridation are not aware of this, and therefore they are not alarmed by this. And there has been a conspiracy, for all of you who cannot hear the word without cringing, there has been a conspiracy, well organized, to lie to you for the purpose of getting you to believe that poison is good for your teeth. They didn't run any tests. They didn't do any studies as you're supposed to before you medicate the people because they didn't want to discover the truth. They wanted to manufacture a lie. And they succeeded for 60 years. And you have some people who still can't decide if fluoride, arsenic, lead, cadmium, and mercury are good for your teeth or not. We were all told that this mysterious substance, fluoride, which is more toxic than lead, almost as toxic as arsenic, that fluoride is good for you. I don't know what kind of human being would do that to another human being, but he's sick. He needs to be removed from power. This person is dangerous. Now, let's proceed with the next card. The public relations campaign to sell fluoride. Now, you must know this name, Edward Bernays. It's the nephew of Sigmund Freud. In the 1930s, this nephew of Sigmund Freud, Edward Bernays, was public relations advisor to the Aluminum Company of America, Alcoa, Alcoa's principal attorney, Oscar Ewing, went on to serve in the Truman administration from 1947 to 1952 as head of the Federal Security Agency, of which the Public Health Service was part. Now do you see a conspiracy? Let me repeat it. We have Alcoa's principal attorney, Oscar Ewing, serving on the Truman administration, as head of Federal Security Agency, of which Public Health Service was part. So now we have everybody in place. 
We've got the nephew of Sigmund Freud, Edward Bernays, as the public relations advisor to the Aluminum Corporation of America, Alcoa. It sounds like they played him like a fucking piano. We have Truman involved because he is selecting Oscar Ewing, Alcoa's principal attorney. Harry Truman was a failed haberdasher. Pendergast got him launched. Pendergast was an organizer, a mob boss, you might say. And anything that came out of Pendergast's organization was criminal and corrupt. And Harry Truman is that asshole. He should never have become the president. He was an idiot from day one. But he did what he was told, and so he was allowed to become the vice president. It's like having Dan Quayle as vice president. Except in this case, FDR died, and fucking Truman wound up as the president. Dropping bombs on a country that was provoked and did respond by attacking. And FDR knew in advance that the Japanese would attack and did nothing because the bankers wanted America involved in the war. It was very, very lucrative. And they got their wish. If the American people knew the truth about everything, they would dispose of government. They would allow the government to run like the Internet runs. There is no president of the Internet. We don't need a fucking president. The people run it, and it works just fine. You got a few assholes who send out spam, and they spy on you, but most of the spying is done by government. They're the ones who are collecting all your emails. They want to use it against you one day. If they need to coerce you, this is how they coerce everybody in Congress. They get dirt on them. They send over a child to have sex with them. The child has been kidnapped and hypnotized and is not acting on her own part. And let me give you two glaring examples. Kathy O'Brien is one. Bryce Taylor is another. And Bryce Taylor wrote a book. It's called Thanks for the Memories. Her real name might be Sue Ford. She used a pen name because what she is telling would get her killed. And she did not get killed. And she had sex with a lot of famous people. And it was against her will. She was hypnotized. She had a car accident, I think. And she started to remember. Andy Perel was trained as an assassin. But he went through the same process. They fractured his mind. They hypnotized him. And they made him do things while under hypnosis, like murder people. And his MK Ultra program was called Project Superman. And I read the whole book on this channel. So if you want to turn on the truth and turn off the propaganda, look for the playlist Project Superman on this channel. I had to rest after every chapter I read before I recorded it. And when I recorded it, I did so very reluctantly because it was so painful to read the first time. I had to rest after every chapter because it was so grueling. And I didn't go through what he went through. I just read what they did to him. They killed him many times. They had him drink cyanide. They shot him in the head at close range with a gun. And he was able to heal every injury. They threw him out of an airplane in daytime. He bounced. He lived. He was dead, but he brought himself back to life with the healing pool. He partitioned his mind and created something extraordinary. He was genetically perfected, by the way, before he was born. That was part of the experiment. They were looking for a fighting machine that would do exactly as they were told and go into areas that were too risky for anybody who had any sense at all. There are so many details of this book, I can't give them all to you in 30 seconds or even 5 minutes. If you want to know the full story, read the book. I read the book to you. 
And so all you have to do is sit back and watch television. Project Superman. Then you will be clued in on how government and military really operate. It is a monster, and the people need to know. Now, the X-Files have decided that they're going to play a role in informing the people. I decided I was going to play a role by reading Andy Perrow's book, Project Superman. And Andy Perrow decided that he would get his revenge by telling the story. And so he wrote the book. I don't consider Andy Perrow a great writer, but he wrote down enough that we can glean what government is really like, and it can only get worse. So they have Edward Bernays working for Alcoa as public relations advisor. They have Alcoa's principal attorney, Oscar Ewing, serving in the corrupt Truman administration from 1947 to 1952 as head of the Federal Security Agency, of which the Public Health Service was part. Now they're all set up to lie to the people in the name of government. If you're still standing, maybe you should sit down because that is quite a burden on your mind to face for the first time that government is one giant fucking conspiracy. It's one giant fucking organized criminal organization. Government is a mafia. It is organized crime against the people. And that government is best which governs least because then you have the least amount of poison in your drinking water. And the framers discovered that when they began to study all governments all over the planet. Between Jefferson and Madison, one of them was watching the other's nephew. I think it was Madison was watching Jefferson's nephew here in the U.S., and Jefferson went to Europe to collect books. It might be the other way around. I read the story. I retained enough of it to know that one of them went to Europe collecting books on government. And when he finished reading and studying government, he came back with the idea that government is best which governs least because all governments are corrupt. All of them. They start out somewhat benign. Maybe a revolutionary conquers the previous dictator and sets up his own dictatorship. And the people live still under tyranny. Look at the people of Iraq. This is a typical case. You have one dictator, Saddam Hussein, and who is the next dictator? The USA. But they're playing a psychological game on these people over there to keep them appeased, and the game is propaganda. Governments use propaganda the way a dentist uses a drill, the way a carpenter uses a hammer and a saw, and the way doctors push pills. Because doctors today are pill pushers. They're making most of their income from pushing pills. 70% of the American public is on some form of prescription drug. And this is not by accident. This is fascism. The legislation favors Big Pharma, and Big Pharma legislates to get favorable legislation. It's a conspiracy. If you're opposed to hearing the word conspiracy, get the fuck off my channel. You don't belong here. This channel is for conspiracy theorists, because we know what the fuck is going on. If you don't know what the fuck is going on, get the fuck out. If you're a subscriber, unsubscribe. I don't need 56,000 fucking subscribers. Just get the fuck off my channel. I came here to tell the truth. If you can't handle the fucking truth, get the fuck out. And don't come back. We are going to discuss the truth here, and the truth is that government is a fucking mafia. It is organized crime, and there are conspiracies born with every fucking dollar created by the parasitic and private Federal Reserve. Only the brain dead are going to say that every conspiracy is a nutcase. 
If you have any experience at all in life, you know that as soon as there is money, there is a conspiracy to get it. Many years ago, it was the church that confiscated your money. Today, it's a political government of cockroaches who take your money through taxation, which they have convinced us is necessary. What is necessary is that you spend the money you earn, not the government. Now, the aluminum industry, Alcoa in particular, had a problem. In the production of aluminum, they were winding up with a whole lot of this deadly poison, fluoride. And they had to get rid of it. So what do you think they did? In the interests of fascism and to the detriment of the people, Oscar Ewing, Alcoa's principal attorney, and now in the Truman administration as head of Federal Security Agency and Public Health Service, Ewing authorized water fluoridation for the entire country in 1950 and enlisted Bernays services to promote water fluoridation to the public, footnote 9. And I have read this Bernays story in many other fluoride articles. Bernays is the key, and Oscar Ewing was the one who appointed him, or enlisted him, as this author says. Enlisted Bernays services to promote water fluoridation to the public. In other words, Bernays was in charge of enlightenment and propaganda, and this is no different than Hitler's Ministry of Enlightenment and Propaganda. The USA is run the same way as the other Nazi regime under Adolf Hitler. Now, it took them many decades of brainwashing the public to think that fluoride is good for your teeth. If you ask the common person, what is fluoride good for? They will tell you it's good for your teeth. The truth is, 41% of kids in America have an overdose of this poison. And it's showing up in their bones, their teeth, the IQ, the pineal gland. Every organ is affected by this poison. And Alcoa is responsible for it. I think that there should be some class action lawsuits. The propaganda campaign should be exposed. The American people should be told the truth. And Alcoa should go out of business for poisoning the people. All of their assets should be divided up by the victims, the worst victims. Every kid who has fluorosis should be paid by Alcoa. This was a massive campaign, a conspiracy to lie to the people and poison the children. And what does the EPA say today? They still want to put fluoride in your water, but they want to reduce it. And they're not telling you how much arsenic, lead, cadmium, or mercury comes along with the wet slurry when they wet scrub the chimneys. This is not pharmaceutical grade medication. This is poison right off the chimneys of the fertilizer plants, the aluminum industry, and the nuclear bomb industry. And it's being dumped into your water as if your water supply was their toilet. And that's the message I want my viewers to hear. If you favor fluoridation, get the fuck off my channel. I don't want you here. You are not welcome here. We're going to get to the truth. And when you meet people who are pro-fluoride, ask them if they would mind taking a tablespoon of rat poison sodium fluoride with their coffee. Because I'm dying to hear what happened to them. And so are the rest of us. Now listen to this next sentence because it is shocking. Still, the campaign to fluoridate the nation's water supplies took place mainly in individual cities and townships, necessitating a sophisticated propaganda campaign to persuade local officials to proactively support fluoridation. They're going to convince local officials to poison the people. Now, how do you suppose they did that? When you look at the costs of disposing of these toxins in a responsible way, 
It's something like $7,000 per ton. And so they could easily give a few thousand to corrupt officials so that they can look the other way as the people are poisoned. There is a marriage here between the criminal element and our government officials. Is that clear? Government is organized crime because somebody in government will always take a bribe in order to poison the people. And this can go on for six decades, which it has. They started fluoridating in 1947, right after they discovered how to create nuclear bombs. The nuclear bomb industry produced a lot of fluoride and they had to get rid of it. So they sent it over to the water company and had people drink it. The problem is, 50% of that fluoride stays with your body forever. It goes into the bones, the teeth, and all the organs. It disrupts every process in your body. It lowers your IQ. It makes your dick shorter. No, it doesn't make your dick shorter. Get out of here. It calcifies the pineal gland. Diabetics who drink a lot of water are especially poisoned. And construction workers working in the hot sun who drink a lot of water are also especially poisoned, and it's not a surprise that they die pretty young. The death report doesn't say fluoride, but their illnesses trace back to fluoridation of the water. And that was started under the Truman administration with Alcoa's principal attorney, Oscar Ewing who is head of the Federal Security Agency, which includes Public Health Service, and he authorizes water fluoridation for the entire fucking country in 1950. Then he enlists Bernays, nephew of Sigmund Freud, to promote water fluoridation to the public. And Bernays was all too happy to get paid to do that. And what we have today is six decades of poisoning the water of the people. Six and a half decades. 1950 to 2015 is 65 fucking years. There is a lot of fluoride in the cemeteries of America. Safely locked up in a tomb. Is this how you want to die? Is this how you want to live? Is this how your children are going to live, or are you going to get off your ass and do something? Get the TSA finger out of your ass and get busy spreading the truth. So now we have ways to persuade local officials, to me that means bribery, to proactively support fluoridation. Bernays recognized New York City as the foremost battleground and a particularly valuable tactical prize given the prevalence of liberal media outlets. You know, the author could learn when to use a comma and it would read so much easier. Learn when to use a comma. Adverb clauses need a comma. Any part of the sentence that's unnecessary in order to have a complete sentence requires a comma. What is so difficult about figuring that out? If you got an education, did you ever learn to use a comma? It's one of the basic tools of writing. Don't write fucking articles for me to read unless you know when and how to use a fucking comma. New York City as the foremost battleground and a particularly valuable tactical prize, comma, given the prevalence of liberal media outlets. The last part of that sentence is not necessary to have a full sentence, a complete sentence, and so you need a comma, given the prevalence of liberal media outlets. Once the New York press was abuzz about the city's prospective fluoridation, other municipalities would be more easily persuaded to form ranks. Footnote 10. This was an organized conspiracy to poison your water. Are you still for fluoridation? 
Or do you now recognize it for what it is? It is a conspiracy perpetrated by Alcoa using Oscar Ewing and Edward Bernays to promote it. Promote poisoning the people. Imagine that. And it succeeded. And today, 70% of America is fluoridated. Poisoned. Not just with fluoride, but with arsenic, lead, cadmium, and mercury, and therefore, this so-called medicine cannot be pharmaceutical-grade medication. Now, what about Bernays? What is this guy all about? Was he evil? Bernays recalled the fluoridation campaign in which he was involved as merely another assignment. That sentence would read better with commas. And then there's a quote here by journalist Christopher Bryson, who interviewed Bernays on the fluoride campaign in 1993. And this quote says, The PR wizard specializing in promoting new ideas and products to the public by stressing a claimed health benefit. Now, I don't expect Bernays to be a chemist. I don't expect him to understand this very simple concept. The most reactive element on the periodic table is fluorine. As an ion, it's called fluoride. It picks up an electron and becomes negatively charged. But this atom is different than all others in the halogen group. We do need iodine and we do need chlorine in our bodies. But we don't need fluoride, and here's why. The radius of this atom is so small and its electrical attraction so strong that it is a poison to the body. Imagine that your body was, all the processes in your body were represented by paper clips on a table. Now, you don't want to disturb the paper clips because that means disrupting all of the processes which keep you healthy. Now, the neodymium magnet fluoride comes along. Does it disturb every paper clip on the table? That's what fluoride does, and that's why it's a poison. I wouldn't expect Bernays to know anything about chemistry because he was just an asshole who did something he was told to do. The real chemists at Alcoa knew exactly what they were doing to us, and they didn't care. And we shouldn't care about Alcoa today. We should bring them down to ruin. We should divide up all their assets and pass them out to the victims with the worst victims getting paid the most. Bernays is not a saint. Listen to what he said. Quote, you can get practically any ideas accepted, Bernays told me, chuckling. If doctors are in favor, the public is willing to accept it because a doctor is an authority to most people, regardless of how much he knows or doesn't know. So now he's admitting that doctors lied. They were bribed. Can you see the handwriting on the wall? They were bribed, and they're being bribed today. Because who benefits when people get sick from poison? Doctors and dentists. The teeth need work. That generates a whole lot of business for the American Dental Association. They are a bunch of conspiring crooks, and we need to bring them down. We need to bankrupt every pro-fluoridation dentist and doctor. We need to drag their asses into court and sue them until they are penniless. And then you make the lawyers rich. And the lawyers are part of this entire corrupt organization of criminals. The American Bar Association is one of the favorite organizations that supports the district of criminals. So Bernays is telling you that doctors are the ones to get because they have authority with most people, regardless of how much they know or don't know. I heard a doctor say recently on a YouTube video that when you distill water, the fluoride stays behind. That is bullshit. 
Let me tell you the truth. Water has a boiling point, 212. Fluorosilicic acid has a boiling point, 227. They both have vapor pressure because they have a boiling point. What is boiling point? It's when atmospheric pressure equals vapor pressure. And the fluid is free to leave the pot. So when you boil water, you're boiling fluorosilicic acid. It comes out in the distilled water. Distilled water is not pristine. It is not pure. It is loaded with fluoride. And if you go buy a bottle of distilled water and taste it, you can taste the fluoride. Your body will react to the fluoride if you listen to your body, but most people don't have the sense to listen to their body. When you eat something that's bad for you, your body tells you. And if you're accustomed to listening to your body, every time you take a fucking drink of water, your body is screaming, Poison! Poison! So Bernays is telling about the method. He says, by the law of averages, you can usually find an individual in any field who will be willing to accept new ideas. He means accept bribes to believe or pretend to believe in new ideas. And then he says, once they accept the new ideas, the new ideas then infiltrate the others who haven't accepted that rat poison is good for you. I'm adding a little bit here to the quote because I want you to know the truth. He didn't say it clearly enough. He just said that we are fooling the public. We find key people in the society, we get them on our wagon, and then everybody else follows. If I told you in the beginning of this video that people will poison themselves, all you have to do is change their ideas. Have them believe that fluoride is actually good for you. When you say fluoride, people think beautiful teeth. It's a lie. There is no benefit to fluoride. It damages teeth. It makes them porous. And it invites cavities. It makes the teeth ugly so that a kid can't even get married. Nobody wants to go out with him or her because he or she has ugly teeth. She doesn't brush her teeth. It's fluorosis and 41% of the kids have it. Now what do you need to wake up? That was footnote 11. Next card. Yet in the early 1950s, just as Bernays was brought on board, public sentiment toward fluoridation was clearly on the side of the anti-fluoridationist camp that included leading doctors and researchers arrayed against those opposing fluoridation were New York City Health Department Commissioner. Well, in the city of New York, corruption doesn't surprise me because it is a government and it is thoroughly, thoroughly corrupt like Chicago. And if you live in New York and you're not bitching about the corruption, then you must be loyal to your city and blind to the truth that New York is one gigantic fucking conspiracy and the New York City Health Department Commissioner favors poisoning the people. The Rockefeller Foundation favors poisoning the people. Bernays said this, All of this intrigues me to no end. It intrigues him that they're poisoning the people. This sounds like Goebbels. You know, under Hitler, remember Goebbels? He just ate it up. He just found the Hitler regime intriguing to no end. Bernays said, All of this intrigues me to no end. And he remarked that to the city health commissioner. And then he added, because it prevents challenging situations deeply related to the public's interest, which may be solved by the engineering of consent. Engineering of consent is a euphemism. What does he really mean? Propaganda. Engineering consent is propaganda, period. The name of this article is Poison is Treatment. Up is down. Right is wrong. Poisoning the people is good for the people. One such approach to promoting public opinion involved correspondence from the city's health department to the presidents of the NBC and CBS television network. 
informing them that debating fluoridation is like presenting two sides for anti-Catholicism or anti-Semitism, and therefore not in the public interest. In other words, the truth is going to be outlawed. That anyone who opposes fluoridating the water, which means poisoning the water with fluoride, arsenic, lead, cadmium, and mercury, from a process called wet scrubbing, in which the chimneys cannot release the poisons to the atmosphere because it's poisonous, we're going to wet that down and put it into a tank. We're going to ship it to the water company and get paid to dump it into the water supply. Now, is there anything that I said that is untrue? This is a non-pharmaceutical grade medication. And it's being forced on the people without their consent. There is no choice about it. It was all decided on the federal or state level, and you don't have any say locally. Let me show you a map. These cities that you see are cities and communities that rejected fluoridation. They told the state and the federal government, fuck you. We're going to end the fluoridation whether you like it or not. And in some of the cases, like Amsbury, Massachusetts, this is the state with the highest average IQ in the country. The vote was narrowly won, and they ended fluoridation. The vote was 1,700 and something to 1,300. There are 1,300 people out of every 3,000 who want poison in their drinking water in the most intelligent state in the Union, Massachusetts. And I ask, what the fuck is wrong with you people in Massachusetts? And the answer is propaganda. That's what's wrong. There has been a campaign to spread a lie, and people still believe that fluoride is good for their teeth. Let me repeat. Hydrofluorosilicic acid comes down in wet scrubbing of the chimneys along with arsenic, which is number one, lead, cadmium, mercury. They spell out calm, C-A-L-M, cadmium, arsenic, lead, mercury, and hydrofluorosilicic acid. Hydrofluorosilicic acid. You need to know this word because it goes in your gun, which is at your hip, and you draw it out to fire when you're in an argument. This is a figure of speech. It's not a real gun. It's your defense weapon. You pull out hydrofluorosilicic acid and C-A-L-M, cadmium arsenic, lead mercury. And then you can argue intelligently and with some facts. The people you're arguing with are idiots. They believe propaganda. 1,300 out of 3,000 in the state of Massachusetts with the highest IQ in the country are misled into believing that poison is good. Poison is treatment. And that's the name of this article. Poison is treatment. So Bernays says that if you allow any discussion about fluoridation, it's like hearing two sides for anti-Catholicism or anti-Semitism, and therefore is not in the public interest. He has faulty reasoning. He needs a psychiatrist. He should go see his uncle, and maybe his uncle will discover what's wrong with him through hypnosis. I don't know if his uncle was still alive I don't know much about the life of Sigmund Freud. I studied him and all his theories as a kid, and I was never interested again because he was full of shit. I think by now all of his theories have been proven wrong. Penis envy is the most hilarious. Penis envy. That girls have penis envy. Is this fucked up? Anyway, Sigmund Freud did make some contributions. He did make us aware of the subconscious, and I think that that's the most powerful part of us all. It might remember previous lifetimes. So it is not in the best interest of the people to know the truth or to discuss anything. I suppose it's not in the best interest of Alcoa to do studies to see if this poison that they're putting in the water supply has any benefits. 
They just blanket a lie that fluoride is good for your teeth. People believe it and they go with it. And 1,300 people out of 3,000 in the state with the highest intelligence fell for it. That fluoride is good for your teeth. It's a lie. It's propaganda. There is a conspiracy here to defraud the people with propaganda. And they have an organization, let's call it the Ministry of Enlightenment and Propaganda. That's what Adolf Hitler called it. And I think his guy was Goebbels. So Bernays is a clever little bastard. The author says, Another method involves laying the groundwork for making fluoridation a household term with a scientific patina. So now we've got a thin layer. You know how beautiful copper is when it turns green. It's absolutely beautiful. I love to see a roof that has some age to it. A copper roof that turns green in a wealthy neighborhood is just beautiful. And so they have a lot of fakes to speed up the process. And now we're going to take that same concept, a scientific patina, and we're going to make fluoride, which is a poison more deadly than lead. We're going to make that palatable to the American household, and we're going to try to sell it to the world. The only problem is the world didn't buy it. Some of them poisoned their people for 20, 30, 40 years, and then they quit because they realized this is fucking poison. And they also realized we are not in the business of medicating the population. That's not what we do. I'm going to read that sentence again because it'll have more meaning to you now. Another method involved laying the groundwork for making fluoridation a household term with a scientific patina. He advised his clients to send letters to the editors of leading publications discussing what the specific aspects of fluoridation required. 